Hello everyone, how are you doing? It's Dahlia season. It makes me very happy. But at the same time, it's bittersweet because that means autumn is literally, literal, literally here. Summer is over. Winter is coming. We are getting to the most wonderful time of the year. But at the same time, you know, it's gonna be cold. And at the same time, flowers in our garden are going to die back. And at the same time, it's also the start of the new season next year. So in this video, we are going to, of course, make mason jar bouquets from this dahlia for my flower stand. And maybe do a little jump start, grow cut flowers for next year. And a little bit of, you know, flower life diaries. All right. I just listened to a podcast and they talk about being busy and being happy and the relationship between, you know, these two. They say people are unhappy when they are too busy, when they feel like, oh, they don't have time to do anything. Um, and at the same time, people are unhappy when they have too much of the free time. Um, <laughs> you know, it's so it sounds like silly, it sounds like funny, but it's so true and it's, I feel like I can relate to this. Um, in winter time, I would get bored, I would get depressed because there's no flowers in my garden, there's nothing to do in my garden. I only play with seedlings, you know, with the grow light. But at the same time, when summers come, I feel like, oh my god, I'm so busy, I'm gonna quit gardening. I think almost every summer, especially late summer. I kept saying to Jason that, you know, I'm gonna quit gardening um, because I have to do my full-time job, maintain my garden, cut flowers, make bouquets, sell bouquets, you know, and all the other stuff. So I feel like this is so true. If you agree, if you feel the same, can you like, you know, let me know in the comment too. Um, and, you know, I, I learned a few things from this podcast too that, you know, we should, yeah, we should keep ourselves busy. We we can have, you know, side hustle. We can try to do so many things, but, you know, just limit to moderate. Um, maybe um, try not to say yes to everything and try not to put too much pressure on ourselves. I think that's gonna help. Um, anyway, look at this book, okay? There's a few trip that I, a few things that I wanna share with you. Um, you see this pink, right? and the white right i pair this with darker color of foliage and this will it will give like the contrast to this bouquet okay although i do like white pink and some dark one i also add some orangey peachy celosia here because i feel like it's gonna give some dimension to the bouquet and at the same time if you have you know, like white color flowers or pink color flowers, and you don't want it to be too romantic, too fling fling, too cute, you know, add some dark color flowers. I add some water into this potting mix just to moist them up a little bit. We don't want the potting mix to be too wet because we are going to water the seedling later. Seedling are just like us. When they grow up, they need more rooms. 
so I'm gonna take them out and give them to a new room for them to grow faster. And you want to gently pull these babies because they are very fragile. They are just babies. You have to give them extra comfort. And the most fragile part of the seedling are the roots. So you can hurt the leaves a little bit, but try not to hurt the roots at all. Depending on the germination rate, if you already have enough seedlings, you don't have to save every single seedling like this one. It's very weak and it's very small, so I'm gonna take it out and get rid of it. I'm gonna save the strongest one. These two, you know, kinda tangled together. I can just eliminate this one so I don't disturb the root of this big one. I also reuse some soil from the seedling trays too because I don't want to waste any of that. Also trying not to push the soil into the seedling roots. Just, you know, sprinkle the soil on them. And again, the roots are very fragile, so I'm not pushing the soil at all. I just, you know, touch, touch, touch it. For smaller seedling, I have to be extra careful. But the good part is that because the seedling is still small, they don't develop long roots yet. So that means it's easier to move them. This way we don't hurt the roots of the seedling too much. This one is very small, but I have no choice because I need more seedling of this variety. So I'm gonna plant it there very gently and I'm not touching the roots at all. Water will help glue the roots to the potting mix without pressing the soil. Monday morning blues I open my eyes And I'm greeted by a cute little smile The world is new With you by my side Everything is beautiful Tuesday afternoon I'm calling you home Just to hear your voice on the phone I think of you And I'm not alone You are everything I have been waiting for this rain for so long. 
finally is here my garden is very very dry to plant anything at all and this rain gonna help a lot and I am going to take this rain day to order some more seeds because I got a free shipping um, deal from Johnny Seed you know my favorite seed website um, I don't get advertisement or sponsorship from the company at all it's just you know my favorite site because they have so much growing information for each seeds they have beautiful photo of flowers and I just you know been ordering with them and they are reliable so you know it's just it's just staying with my habit you know like when I am in love with something or someone I just stay with them Whenever I am going to order new seed, I always go through my seed package that I already have to make sure that I don't order the seed that I already have. I also, you know, take the opportunity to reorganize my seed as needed. The corner here are flower seeds that I sow in late summer and autumn. And this corner here are the flowers that I sow in winter or maybe very early spring and this section is like random flowers that i you know been collecting like you know weird variety and this section are summer flowers and all this section are vegetables and because i'm obsessed with seniors this whole box are just senior seeds some of them from johnny seeds some of them are florid and some of them are just you know the seed that I save from my garden and because I sow seed once or twice a month I separate this seed that I am probably going to sow maybe this week I really enjoy exploring new flowers variety so when I come to the website I go to flowers here go to new for 2024 and then you know I just keep looking at this new varieties of flowers and add them to the card like this one add add to the card so pretty ah oh, tulips and here's my order status my favorite flowers in the whole wide world i do use this to complement the focal flowers in my bouquet celosia Again, I need to buy new celosia seed from farmers because, you know, the celosia that sell seed, they not, they're not gonna look like this. Scabiosa, I failed them so bad this year, so I have to buy new seed to make sure that I have successful year next year. Snapdragon Madame Butterfly Pink. I really regret I didn't grow this variety this year. I miss them so much. Benary Giant Carmine Rose Seniors. I regret that I didn't grow this variety this year. I just love the pink so much and you know this year I kind of focus on floret and you know it's, it's look nice but it's a little too pale for you know my summer flower arrangement. Next is the tulips. White lip star. This is new variety, see? It's new, so that's why I wanna try this one so bad. I'm so excited. And last new variety of Delphinium, She Wilden Beauty. I used these flowers in my arrangement before, but I have not tried to grow them. I know they're gonna be difficult to grow, but let's see. I'm very excited. I usually don't order flower seed this time of the year but because I got the free shipping deal and also because some variety I I am afraid they are going to sold out so I have to put an order now um, but you know the most ideal time to order flower seed is in like winter or spring because those seeds are going to be fresher that means you know the farmer harvest the seed in late summer or in fall and then they package and then they sell the next spring this seed can be like from last year you know and the germination rate is not going to be as good as the freshest the most fresh 
seeds. Okay. Um. But anyway, you know, if I wait until spring, I'm pretty sure they're going to increase the seeds package price because they do that every year, just like me too. I um increase my messenger bouquet price every spring. So you know, there's a pro and con, and um, it's up to you. But please don't feel pressure to order seeds now. I just want to share this with you. The coupon expired. <sighs> Guess what? I'm gonna wait and save this $78. It took me about four years to find the right plants for that garden because whatever I planted there, the deer always come to eat it except these survivors that are still there. And I just finally found the foxglove, which is going to be the last right plant that I, I will plant in that garden. It's going to be perfect because the spiky flowers will add dimension to that garden and foxglove is going to bloom in that time gap of the year that the spring flowers just finished and we are waiting for the summer flowers to bloom and also the bees really love this foxglove you know they like to go underneath that upside down cone shaped flowers it's gonna be awesome um i also learned something about life from this experience too i learned that whenever we feel like we are not belong anywhere. Whenever we feel like nobody appreciate us, it's not true. There always a place for us. There always somebody who is working so hard to find us, to have us in their community, to have us be part of them.
it has been raining for two days and it's the perfect time to take cutting from summer plants for propagation for next year. So you want to take down all the bottom leaves from the cutting, okay, and you cut right underneath the joint because the root will go from this joint and you want to take some of the foliage out from the cutting because you don't want the cutting to lose too much water from evaporation. So you want to change this into this. Just two leaves, this is plenty enough. A lot of people would put rooting hormones on the end of this cutting and then stick it into the soil and give them humidity dome to give them humidity and you know make sure that they grow roots and they don't dry up. But I find that this is so much, I have so much success doing this. Just you know put this cutting right in the water. And I also learned from my past mistake that if I put too much water, the cutting, the stem can rot. Um, I only put enough water to cover the lowest bottom joint of the cutting. And this should go roots in, I don't know, we'll see. And I will place these by the windowsill that have some partial sunlight, but not direct hot full sun. I also learned from my past mistake that I should not wait to take the cuttings too late because it's gonna be too cold and the cold temperature in the air will send a signal to these plants telling them to stop growing. We don't want that. We want the plant to think that they are still growing when we put them in the water so they continue to grow the roots. And the reason why I take the cutting right after the rain because I want to make sure that the plants are fully hydrated. I want to make sure that the plants are happy. So when we take their cutting, you know, they are going to do okay. Come on. Because these babies are not strong enough for the full exposure of Mother Nature yet, so I put them here next to the wall, so the wall protect them from the wind and from full sunlight. Also, the roof right there will protect them from the rain. Hello. It's unbelievable how fast weed can grow. I just cleaned up this garden bed just about one and a half week ago. Some of them could be flower seedling, but I'm not gonna spend time to identify them. Wow. Uh, this is no good. It's gonna come back. Here we go. This is one of my favorite gardening tools that I learned from vegetable farmers and this will take care of the little wheat seedlings. I am letting the wheat seed to sprout and I am going to kill them just like this for a few time before I mulch and before I plant flower seedlings. Coffee?
is the spookiest month of the year and I just want to create something that you know spooky for people in my office and this is very random I just picked you know spooky color flowers I hope it's come out nice I think oh. The day getting shorter and shorter, and I'm gonna keep saying this in every single video. Um, you know, usually this time of the year, I I would not clean up my garden. I would not um, cut off any flowers. I just wanna keep my flowers in my garden as long as possible. But you know, I learned from last year that I, again another mistake that you know. Um, sometimes I have to let go of things. I don't want to let go of, flat, of summer, you know, but that's not gonna happen. I decide that I am going to embrace the season. I am going to enjoy October. I am going to try to watch some, watch some spooky movies, you know, and just to be present, letting go of, you know, the wonderful summer. I know it's hard, but this year I'm better and um, I think that's good for, you know, our mind too. And I hope you do the same, okay? So I'm bringing this flower arrangement to my office to share up people in my office, who, to share up people who visit my office and I think it's gonna be awesome. Oops, some dead flowers here. Alright guys, I gotta go to work and I'll see you again in the next video. Ah! Bye-bye!